Right then, hello, good evening, and welcome. My name is Paul, I'm also called Knickknack. I'm the brains behind Knickknack's Daily Teaser. Go look them up if you can't find them, or I forget to put them up in the corner there. I'm the brains behind a few movie reviews, and there's one or two I should talk about maybe at another time. I'm also the brains behind a lot of TV reviews. If I see a TV show I like and think is worth making a video about, I will, and then I will share it with you through my YouTube account, Mr. Cuddy2977, and my blog, Knickknacks Old Peculiar. For the past few weeks, I've been watching season two of Good Omens, uh, the series based on the novel by Neil Gaiman and the late Sir Terry Pratchett, and I've been remarkably impressed enough to want to tell you about each episode. Last week, I saw uh, episode four. This week, Last night, Friday, yesterday in fact, I saw episode 5, The Ball, and I wanted to tell you about it, as I always have. Episode 5, The Ball, opens not with a summary of earlier episodes, but with Shax, played by Miranda Richardson, determinedly walking the corridors of hell, heading for the office of Feather, Reese Shearsmith. Shax needs to arrange an invasion, and needs a little help from both Fofo and the armies of hell itself. Meanwhile, in Whitbar Street in London, Aziraphale, Michael Sheen, is persuading, cajoling and outright bribing his fellow traders into coming along to the monthly Whitbar Street traders meeting. He has the assorted and reluctant help of Crowley, David Dennett, and assorted preparations to make with the help of a strategically paced string band and chandelier. Frankly, Aziraphale is not planning a meeting, but a dance. What he doesn't realise is that Hell also has plans. Now, what did I make of this episode? What did I make of the bull? It has to be said, and if you read the written version of this post, you'll notice I've given it three out of a potential four stars instead of the usual four. It has to be said, I missed something. At least three of the earlier episodes. Episode two, The Clue. Episode three, I Know Where I'm Going. And episode four, last week's, The Hitchhiker. All had what the show's producers call a mini-sode, a mini-story incorporated into them. Something that the main part of the episode then expands on. The Hitchhiker's last week, tells us about zombie Nazis revived in order to try and chase and capture Aziraphale and Agnes Nutter's book of prophecies in the first series. Those, I think, added a certain something, a certain je ne sais quoi, uh, if you want me to get poncy in French. Uh, they added a certain amount of heft that I felt enriched each of the relevant episodes they were part of. By contrast, the ball didn't have a built-in minisode. Something I felt something I felt that weakened the, the episode overall. It lacked a little intellectual punch, if you want to put it like that. Saying that, the episode is, yes, a very good episode in and of itself. The acting, unsurprising given the cast, is bloody fantastic. Richardson as Shax, in particular, is actually far more menacing than you could imagine. Um, Gaiman and Fillmore's writing for the series is superb, and the production itself is pretty damn good, especially as it's built around a minimum of sets, at least for this series. It's it's a quite literally a base under siege episode, and quite dramatic with it. The scenes of Crowley getting people at the meeting out of Aziraphale's bookshop is quite something to watch. It really is quite tense. Inevitably, there's a lot nod to the late Terry Pratchett in the shape of Mrs. Sandwich, played by Donna Preston. She is... ahem... a seamstress. No, she is not somebody that sews for a living. If you've not read Terry Pratchett's Men at Arms or any of his Discworld novels, you will not know that... Ankhmore Pock, the chief city of Pratchett's Discworld setting, has 987 women who identify as seamstresses and two needles. Mrs. S doesn't exactly do sewing, let's put it that way. <coughs> Chuck 
just as an aside and a bit of a blunt one, so Terry uses the word or the term seamstress constantly in his Discworld novels, basically as a euphemism for prostitute. It's something that in the real world dates back to at least Victorian times, at least to the eight, 1880s, the late 1880s. Uh, Matthew, there was a chap called Henry Mayhew, I believe, who wrote a book about the London poor and the various working classes who does something similar. Some of the women he meets describe themselves as seamstresses. Um, so it's something I've been aware of for a long time, alongside the phrase house of ill repute as a description of, let's be blunt, a brothel. There is supposedly one in my hometown of Brentwood, and it's not supposed to be a house of ill repute. It's actually quite well spoken of. Sorry, that's another old gag I recycled from Sir Terry Pratchett. But at any rate, there's euphemisms abound, and it's an old, old euphemism or a joke that I saw repeatedly in the Discworld novels that Sir Terry wrote. For me, it is like going to a slightly strange party and seeing an old friend. It's extremely familiar, it's extremely reassuring, and it's good to see this, because it's as reassuring as other familiar Pratchett signposts in the earlier episodes of this season. Yes, I found the lack of a Minnesota something of a downer, and I have marked the the episode down in the written version of this this video but frankly yes the episode is reassuringly good frankly i am going to be back next week to watch the last episode of the series i will be watching that last episode of good omens every day on friday the 29th of september and i will be posting my written and video reviews of it on saturday the 30th of september i will hopefully see you then Check out this series. I will see you later. Take care. Be good. Have fun. Be seeing you.